Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Voss, Editor-in-Chief of Disobedient Media, and I'm here to read one of our articles to you. It's one that I published earlier today, and uh, it's a continuation of two articles that I published almost a year ago, and uh, a lot of you may not be familiar with the story, so um, I will also be producing two more videos today that will be uh, basically the, the previous stories um, to this current update article so that you can get context and you can watch those videos before this one if you need to and also uh, if you don't want to watch videos you can also just um, look at the previous articles that are hyperlinked in this article which I will leave in the description of this video. So with that out of the way um, I wrote that new charges have been brought against South Korea's former president Park Geun-hye, the chairman of Sam as well as the fact that the chairman of Samsung has been named a suspect in a multi-million dollar tax evasion case. The latest developments represent the continuation of previous scandals that ultimately saw Park ousted from the South Korean presidency and the heir of Samsung jailed for over a year. Earlier this month, the Straits Times reported that additional charges had been brought against the former South Korean president, who is in custody while her corruption trial continues. The Straits Times added, quote, The latest charge accuses Park of violating electoral laws by secretly aiding and funding campaign preparations for her political allies ahead of the 2016 general election. And in South Korea, uh, the, pr the sitting president is, is not legally allowed to aid uh, the campaign of their allies in that way. So in, in Korea, that is a major uh, a major breach of the way that they conduct their campaigns. Disobedient Media previously reported on the presidential scandal that unfolded in South Korea in, as in late 2016. As this author noted, a great deal of the ire the South Korean populace unleashed against former President Park Geun-hye stemmed from her bungling of the 2014 Seawall sea ferry disaster that resulted in the deaths of over 300 South Korean high school students. Just beat media related that President Park Yun Hai's whereabouts were unknown during seven crucial hours on the day of the seawall disaster, and that the mysterious gap in the record was officially investigated by the South Korean Parliament. The president's explanation for the absent the time gap was eventually dismissed by the court as insufficient, despite numerous parliamentary hearings. South Korean authorities have so far been unable to determine Park Gin Hai's whereabouts on the day of the tragedy. So this was a major issue in South Korea um, when when the uh, Seawall Ferry disaster took place. At the time, just after the disaster had occurred, se uh, speculation ran rampant as to the cause of Park's inexplicable absence during the disaster. Rumors became so intense that press reports indicate that then-President Park Yun-hai was forced to deny that she was partaking in a ritual at the time that the ferry sank. Despite all this, it was not until years after the Seawall disaster that Park's presidency finally sunk under the weight of additional allegations of corruption that stemmed from leak leaked emails in late 2016. The documents revealed an unusual relationship between Park and her close advisors, principally Choi soon sil Choi is the daughter of a religious figure described in a WikiLeaks cable as a, as a Korean, quote, Rasputin, and who was also extremely close to former President Park before his death. The New York Times wrote regarding Choi soon sils father. They said, quote, Mr. Choi, a, a shadowy figure with several pseudonyms, was believed by many to have exercised Rasputin-like power over Mrs. Park, Ms. Park and to have used it to collect bribes. He died in 1994. So again, that was a quote, and that's the end of the quote, and that was from the New York Times. And they were characterizing Choi Soon Sil's father as a uh, Rasput uh, as exercising a Rasputin-like power over Ms. Park. Press outlets also, uh, including CNN and some other outlets, also applied the Rasputin moniker to uh, Ch Choi Tae Min's daughter. I believe that's his name. Uh, who is Choi Soon Sil? So basically, what I'm trying to say there is that um, while the WikiLeaks cable refers to Choi Soon Sil's father as the Rasputin-like figure, um, CNN and some other outlets have also described Choi Soon Sil herself in those terms, and so it's interesting. And I'm not sure if those reports actually intend to, um, if they know that they've they've they're naming the wrong person that way, or if they're just um, passing on the, the moniker from her, the father to daughter. But anyway, moving on. Mysterious religious figures and their influence on leaders of state was not the only issue revealed in the leaks. The files uh, also showed that 
Choi Soon Sil was influence peddling and directing Park on everything from what to wear to editing her speeches. And the, the minutia that Choi Soon Sil was directing President Park on was absolutely kind of mind boggling. And it really, it, 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 uh, it meant that Choi was also privy to matters of national security that were illegal for her to view without proper vetting. And the Straits Times described the relationship between Park and Choi, quote, Park is also accused of letting Choi, a daughter of a shady religious figure with whom Park was close for decades, handle many key state affairs, despite Choi having uh, no title or security clearance. And so that obviously brings up a lot of parallels with the situation with Hillary Clinton and the way that she, um, uh, you know, allowed her close advisors to handle uh, top secret and classified and sensitive information that would, would you know, usually land you a very long jail sentence if you aren't a an advisor to Hillary Clinton reading those emails. So, um, continuing with, with the article, I wrote, Park's misconduct with regard to assistance in proper use of sensitive material struck some as remarkably similar to the scandal that engulfed Hillary Clinton and her use of private email servers. Like Park, Clinton's advisors inappropriately received highly classified information. WikiLeaks publications also revealed Clinton and DNC efforts to sabotage the candidacy of Bernie Sanders, paralleling the most recent allegations of Park's illegal campaign interference. As this media previously reported, the string of scandals from the seawall to the emergence of documents in 2016 resulted in up to 1.5 million South Koreans taking to the streets for weeks of protests that ultimately ended Park's presidency in 2017 and led to her arrest, as well as corruption charges for Choi Soon Sil. The scandal embroiled one of South Korea's largest corporate powers, in addition to undermining and eventually capsizing Park's presidency. In August last year, media reports indica indicated that the billionaire Samsung Electronics Vice Chairman and heir, uh, Lee Jae-yong, was sentenced to five years in prison for paying bribes worth 8.9 billion won, which is translates to uh, 7.9 million US dollars. Choi Soon Sil, in order, uh, to, he so the heir, the the de facto leader of Samsung, paid Choi Soon Sil, Park's advisor, a huge amount of of uh, cash in order to win Park's support for the merger of two Samsung affiliates. So that's the influence peddling issue that uh, came up in the leaked emails. The Wall Street Journal recently noted that Lee Jae Young was given a suspended sentence through an appeals effort after serving a year behind bars in relation to the scandal. However, Lee Jae Young's release from prison was not the end of legal setbacks for Samsung and the Samsung dynasty. Business Insider reports that Lee's father, Samsung chairman Lee Kun Hee, was recently named a, sus a suspect in a $7.5 million tax evasion case that involved the use of employees' bank accounts. So it was, and from what I understand, there was so, it, the the tax evasion was something in in line with hiding cash in employee bank accounts to, um, you know, hide it from the tax services, um, reporting on it. Anyway, so the ultimate fate of South Korea's former president remains to be seen, but disobedient media will report on this story as it develops. And that is the end of the article. And it's relatively short. I mean, a lot of my other articles I've done recently have been a little bit longer than this. But there's a lot of information that is that is uh, in this story. And it's an absolutely mind-boggling story when you actually read the details. And there's a lot of details in this article that I didn't talk about because I've already talked about it in my previous articles, which I will go ahead and read in my next couple of videos for you guys. So... Anyway, thank you once again for joining me. My name is Elizabeth Voss. I'm Editor-in-Chief for Disobedient Media. You can find me on Twitter at Elizabeth, L-E-A-V-O-S. You can find Disobedient Media on Twitter at Disobedient News. I'm also on Steemit, and we have a page on Facebook for the time being. So, uh, you know, I hope that you like these videos. I hope that my audio is better for those of you that couldn't hear me in the last couple, and I apologize for that. Um, I'm doing my best to... Uh, figure out an external mic that I'm, I just got that I'm uh, not used to using yet. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.